Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. With spring's arrival, we're deciding which annual flowers to buy and plant, and there are more choices than ever before. Joining me this afternoon to show us some of the best of the new flowers is Leonard Perry from UVM Extension. Welcome back. Always great to talk to you. Always fun to be back and talk flowers. Now, I know um, from past shows that uh, you trial new flowers every year, and from those trials, you sort of learn what works, what looks best and go from there. Exactly, Judy. I'd trial some perennials, another site, but down at the Burlington Waterfront Park in a collaboration with the Parks and Recreation of Burlington that helps uh, maintain the beds. Um, we have annual flowers. It's All-America Selections Display Garden. It's open 24-7. Uh, you can see it right down there at the waterfront, right uh, in front of the Echo Center at the base of College Street. Um, and that's where we put out over 100 varieties. And actually, this bed was, won an award, national award, for being one of the top All-America Selections beds wow, in the country. That. And this was uh, 2012, and this was the, uh, you can well, we take a closer look at some of these plants, but just a, a view of one of the, uh, uh, one shot of the main front bed, and there's the uh, corner, another one in uh, June when it was planted, you see some of the small plants, and then that same view uh, two months later. Wow. So it's amazing. I, I looked at these and said, wow, <laughs> I had to look back and make sure those were all those same plants and, and how they grew from those little, always amazes me how plants grow from seeds to little plants to, you know, what it's you see incredible. here. And here was just to show you how it changes each year. You have a whole different host, some of the same ones that are good, but a lot of different ones and at different designs each year uh, to see. And this is another bed by the bike path you can see in June and then in August, that same bed with a marigold we'll take a look at in a minute. And then <clears throat> the back of that front bed, uh, we had a little path you can walk through so you can get close up and see the labels on all the plants. But then two months later, wow. uh, just all those <laughs> sweet potatoes in front, we'll take a look at some sedges uh, in the middle there for some height, which really were amazing. Down by the boathouse, we have some, I call them tiered beds here on terrace, terraces or levels. Petunias, last couple of years, this is in June. And then you see what they do. It's wow. just amazing, you know, allow enough room for some of these. I was going to say, one you of have the to keys, really be you know. careful because it looked really sparse at first. And then, as I mentioned, we have things labeled. We have these signs around, which have our um, people that help us, DS Coal and Pleasant View Greenhouses um, in New Hampshire provide a lot of these plants. We have a QR code, um, and you can, if you have one, a smartphone, and you can just scan that, and it goes right to the website, and we'll give you the web address later at the end, where I put up the list of all these plants, and at the end of the season, the ratings. And so tell us a little bit about the All-America Selections program. Okay, the All-America Selections is kind of like the Emmys or the Grammys for the new flowers. Mm -hmm. Breeders breed them. They're trialed in trial gardens. There are about 30 around the country. And the best, uh, the winners that do best overall, are then sent out uh, for these display gardens and for the public. And so we're actually a display garden, not a trial garden. There are about um, somewhere around 170, 180 of these uh, like we have. And these are mainly, the All-America winners are plants that are grown from seeds and bloom the first year. Year. So there are some perennials if they will bloom the first year, but mainly they're annuals and they're grown from seeds as opposed to cuttings where a lot of our plants come from. A lot of the brand names we see now like the Proven Winners are um, you know, from cuttings or vegetative as they're called. What are some of the latest winners? Okay, we usually put out a few of the latest winners. I brought some pictures uh, okay. today, uh, starting with this millet, which was a winner a while back. It wasn't one of the more re recent ones, but I just love it. Again, from that little seedling, you see what happens in a couple of months. The birds just love this. Uh, millet's a grain. This is a purple-leaved one called Purple Majesty. Just really nice. Uh, that marigold we saw in the front of a bed earlier, Moonsong, deep orange. Just a really nice, huge flower, three inches or more across, fairly low plant. This ornamental kale. Great in the fall, goes right up, takes heavy frost. Uh, Glamour Red, that was a winner, a recent winner. Uh, turns really pretty purple in the fall. Uh, the Celosius have been several winners in recent years. Um, this is one of the more recent ones, uh, the, the whole Fresh Look series. There's a red. Mm -hmm. This one is a gold, and it's a plumed Celosia or coxcomb. Just a real pretty one, about a foot and a half high. Now, this Salvia, this is not this typical sage. This is a, scar a scarlet sage, a little bit taller, uh, finer stems, but real pretty bright red flowers. There's a summer jewel uh, pink as well, but this is a winter, a real recent uh, winter, and this is great for hummingbirds, of course, with those red flowers, and this makes a statement. 
black olive looks like a olive and it's black it's just a little low ornamental pepper very shiny fruit dark uh, dark blackish leaves just a real nice one to accent with uh, brighter colors and uh, just a, you know it's a nice one for containers it's a fairly low plant uh, a gallardia there's several of these and these can actually maybe overwinter uh, if you get good snow cover but this is mesa yellow a fairly low one about a foot or so but a real pretty there are a couple of other mesa ones but this was an all-america winter as well and then uh, there's a whole series new series it's called Zahara. They're fairly low zinnias, uh, double Zahara fire there, just a real pretty bright color. Now we've been looking at flowers, but foliage has also become very important. Foliage has been very uh, popular in recent years, and so of course we had to try some foliage, and there's some, a lot of different <laughs> ones people can find out there, uh, whether it's uh, tender. Uh, most, again, uh, these are annual. Some are very tender plants. Um, starting with the first one, we'll take a look at, of course, bananas. Uh, now, of course, this won't grow over. I overwinter these in pots inside. If it doesn't get much, you know, if it gets in the 40s, they're not happy. If it gets in the 30s, I found, they basically <laughs> die. But out here okay. at the Waterfront. These really held up well. They're I mean, very I, dramatic. They are, and that, that bright, and you can see the coloration in the leaves there. Now this is a um, mahogany splendor hibiscus. This is, a, and this again all grew from a small plant. Makes it almost like an instant shrub. There's a banana in the back for a background, and you can take a closer look at that leaf on that um, hibiscus. This is not the perennial one. This would not overwinter. It's more mm -hmm. tender, but just a very. Uh, beautiful uh, background. There's several of these acolyphas, as they're called, copper leaves, because they have coppery leaves, but you can see just a couple here, the variation in leaf colors, but those are very popular. These sedges, we saw these in the earlier picture in the whole mass. This is King Tut. It gets about five feet high. Uh, the sedges normally grow in water and, and water sides, and these were in a dry bed. So it just shows how adaptable some of these plants are. This gets wind continually right there on the lake, yeah. and it holds up well. It doesn't need staking. If you don't like the height, you can go for two feet for Little Tut mm -hmm. uh, cypress, uh, which is a sedge. It looks like a grass, but it's actually uh, the sedge. But uh, great for foliage effect. The sweet potato. We saw a whole mass earlier. Uh, here they are again, just showing some of the it's, colors yeah, in the new some ones. Yeah, different colors. And uh, some of the, and these do make little sweet potatoes. You can't eat, they're kind of starchy. They aren't, they aren't <laughs> like the ones, I tried them once, said okay, can eat them, but that's fine. But these are a couple of newer ones. We had emerald lace and midnight lace, very fine uh, cut leaves as opposed to the others. But again, allow these sweet potatoes plenty of room. Uh, they'll just take over a bed. I like to put them in a container and have them just drape over the side and, and that's the, it for the container. Mm -hmm. Of course, coleus, most of the coleus now uh, like sun. There's sun coleus. This was just one uh, called oxblood. Oh, nice. This is one called Spumoni, just with some very pretty colors in the leaves. But uh, again, most of the coleus, unless you start some of the shade ones from seed, like sun. And this is one called Neptune's Net, kind of a uh, different shape of leaf and, and different coloration. Just a real pretty one. Uh, Cardoon, uh, this is related to the artichoke. And I've actually had one over winter with one year we had good snow cover. But generally they're an annual, but those get huge, maybe, you know, three feet high and four wow. feet across. and with that big silvery leaves are just very dramatic, look like something prehistoric. And finally, this this is a group you see in containers a lot, very tender, kind of like the banana. Mm -hmm. This ma uh, elephant ears, you can see why they're called that, and this one's called black magic. Um, there's a, uh, many others with wrinkly, crinkly leaves and green leaves. But Fun to try different things. It really is, and to see and to see how those hold up, and those, you think they're so delicate, but down with that constant wind, and they really do well down there, which is amazing. Now, you mentioned flowers from cuttings. What have you got for those? Okay, again, our, our two uh, main growers, uh, DS Cole and Pleasant View, uh, provide us a lot of the flowers, just as they do most of the garden center. So I figured, well, let's try these that people are going to be getting. And so we uh, brought quite a few of those along, and just a sampling of the better ones. Again, all these showing really rated on, on the top at the end of the season when we rate them. Some flowers finish out by the end of the season. They're not in bloom. I like to see bloom right through the summer yeah, for these definitely. annuals, as with this lantana here. This is a shrub I grew up with in the south, but in recent years they bred a lot of these new ones. Now you can see some of the colors and grown for annuals out, outside up here and they're just, they do really well up here. Some of the original ones didn't, they really needed more heat, but mm -hmm. um, this one is, real, this was one of the prettiest ones we had with just flowers all over the uh, plant for all summer. Luscious lemonade, I love that color too, it makes you think <laughs> about summer. And then this is more uh, typical coloration you see on the lantanum or the original traditional colors with the kind of pinks and oranges and yellows all in the same flower, sunrise rose. 
Now, trailing petunias, the calibrachoas, we had a whole host of those. Those are popular. Just brought uh, this one because it's very unusual. Cherry star, it's kind of pink with that yellow uh, in the leaf. It's really pretty. And this is Cali deep yellow, just a real pretty yellow. And you can see combined with the red there, you can get reddish leaved foliage plants. And these are fairly low. A lot of them don't do too well, so definitely look at our ratings, see which did well. You see them in baskets a lot. Vista fuchsia, again, we had that whole bed of fuchsias, maybe 15 or more <laughs> different ones there. But Vista fuchsia is one of the brighter ones and did quite well. And you can uh, kind of combine the, the brightness there with some uh, purple and make some real nice effects on, on those. And then we um, have another one I liked uh, called Raspberry Blast. That's pretty. And that was really pretty with kind of that white in there. It looks kind of like a, a good blast there. To, it's one of the Supertunia nose. There are a lot of different lines, like you see that Supertunia, that's a whole series, and they have different colors within those series. Um, the scavolas have been popular for a while. There's several different ones. This was really good for us. You see how that was looking right at the end of the season, just flowers all over it. Called fan flower because the flowers, if you look close, are kind of fan shaped. They're real small. But this is a low and kind of a ground covered kind of plant. It creeps along good for baskets or containers. Uh, this one really like, takes good dry conditions like we've had the last two years. <laughs> it's done well. This Portulaca or uh, Moss Rose, um, Porto Grande is a series, and Magenta is a color on this one. There's, again, two or three in this uh, series. of, uh, And again, most of these grown from cuttings. This one you can grow from seed, and uh, not this cultivar necessarily, but Biden's. Um, and that's um, called Burr Marigold. Is the, it looks a little bit like a marigold, but a little bit lower. And, mm -hmm. um, but that makes a good filler for containers. Uh, verbenas are good for kind of spilling over containers or, or beds and, and along the ground, make it kind of a ground cover. A couple of here that can combine for that, I like those dramatic contrasts, as you see here with <laughs> the purplish blue and then a the, then the bright, brighter color to the Scarlet Star, uh, and then the Royal Chambray, which is kind of the darker color there of the verbena. And they did fairly well. A lot of the newer verbenas don't get that powdery mildew like some of the older varieties did. Um, some of the names are just strange, like Blue My Mind. <laughs> this is a blue flower. <laughs> if you want a blue flower, Evolvulus is, is kind of a different one, a little bit uh, mouthful there, but kind of an interesting name. Not a whole lot of flowers, but I you know, thought it was interesting just for its color. Now, the Sweet Alyssum uh, Lobularia is a new name for that. I don't particularly care for it. I don't like the smell on that. Some people, it's one of those you love or you hate. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love it. But Look at that carpet it makes. It is just amazing. This is Snow Princess. And that's uh, that salvia, salvia we saw earlier this summer, Jewel Red, yeah, kind of interspersed in there for little spots of color. So that's a way we like to try the different combinations each year and see what works. This one's an interesting sweet alyssum. Frosty Night, it has variegated leaves. It's really the first uh, one like that with a little white on the leaves. Uh, not nearly as vigorous as some of the other sweet alyssums, but really pretty uh, if you have, a say, a container. Terrenius are some of these now that do, in the past, they used to do well in part shade or shade, and, and these will, but uh, take some part shade, but they really do well in sun too. Magenta Moon, there's a moon series, there's different colors, and uh, this is the one we had last year. They all rate uh, very nicely. Uh, the Spurges, um, related to poinsettia, actually, Euphorbia, oh, really? um, but Diamond Frost was original. There's, there's several different ones of those, and you can see they make, again, a good filler. This is the one sometimes you see with the poinsettia at Christmas time in a container, but um, and you can dig them up and overwinter them. I've had luck with that. Uh, but Diamond Frost is one, and then we have Breathless Br Blush, good uh, <laughs> tongue twister there, uh, with some very, a uh, little bit of uh, reddish variegation in the leaves. And then finally, we have a New Guinea uh, Impatience uh, Sensation Series, uh, you can see there. Um, and this does not, there's a new disease out there, downy mildew. It's called gray mold that gets mm -hmm. on impatience, oh, yeah, the regular impatience. So you had that. And yep. a lot of people have, you probably won't find a regular impatience for sale. Now you can grow them from seed yourself because it doesn't go carry it on to okay. seed. Or you can get the Sensations because uh, they don't get it, or the New Guinea Impatience, they don't get it. Or you can use one of the foliage plants like the coleus and uh, for some bright color that we saw earlier. So some options for the impatience. So what's the best conditions and care for your plants? Okay, um, when choosing these, of course, you want to look at personal preference. You can mass, uh, you can combine, like you know uh, we've tried to do a little bit. And then, of course, you want the right conditions, which are basically sun, water, and fertilizer. Most of these like sun, except for, and again, even some of the coleus. But mm -hmm. there are a few that, that uh, you can get, like some of the begonias that uh, we didn't, because we don't have much shade down there. Um, but they like a lot of water. 
especially if it's dry. And a lot of these annuals are really bred for fertility, so you really, if they're not blooming well, that may be why they may need more fertilizer. All right, and of course there's a lot more information and pictures on your website. I've got a lot more, including the list of all of these and how they rated on my website, perrysperennials.info. Just go to the, the research section in Waterfront Park and you'll see pictures and lists from previous years as well. well this is going to be my year to try something exotic. Well, go for Plant it. Wise. You know, try some of those exotic foliage. <laughs> I will. I love them. Thanks a lot, Leonard. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.